Hello and welcome to F1 Livery Histories, the channel where we take a look back at the different paint jobs, racing trims and sponsor decals adopted by respective Formula 1 teams throughout the eras. Today we'll be taking a look at one of Formula 1's stalwart constructors, a team that competed against the world's finest at the very pinnacle of motorsport for a quarter of a century, Arrows. Arrows Grand Prix International was officially founded in 1977 by a group of personnel which had previously worked in association with the Shadow Grand Prix racing team. The team's name was derived from the surnames of its five company leaders. The team's primary investor, Franco Ambrosio, former team principal of the Shadow team and earlier still co-founder of March Engineering, Alan Rees, former Le Mans winner, Can-Am champion and recently retired Formula One driver, Jackie Oliver, along with the team's chief engineers, Dave Woss and Tony Southgate, designers of the race-winning Shadow DN8 chassis. This unknown overnight team was newly christened at their base of operations in Milton Keynes and would begin immediate preparations for their maiden Formula One venture in season 1978. So begins our retrospective on the racing liveries of the pugnacious Arrows Grand Prix racing team. The Arrows FA1 designed by Watson Southgate, made its first appearance at the Brazilian Grand Prix of 1978. The Cosworth-powered vehicle featured an exceptionally vibrant gold paint scheme that promoted their major sponsor, German beer, Warsteiner, and was first seen at the 1978 South African Grand Prix. The FA1 proved to be a moderately successful car, however the team were forced to withdraw the car midway through the season, following a verdict handed down by the London High Court of Justice, which banned the car from racing on copyright grounds due to the car bearing an overwhelming amount of similarities to the Shadow DN9 chassis, a car also penned by Tony Southgate. In its place, the team would enter the vastly revised A1 chassis for the remainder of the season. Arrows' beginnings as a Formula 1 operation took a further bump when one of their founding members, Franco Ambrosio, was jailed in Italy for fraud during the team's debut season. In spite of these dramas beyond the pit lane, on track, the breakaway Arrows Ford outfit were off to a flying start. In 1979, the Arrows A1B took on a revamp to its livery, as the top half of the car now bore a sleek black finish. Warsteiner was now distinguishable with bold red logos which adorned the car's bodywork, along with the team's tyre supplier, Goodyear. This same gold and black motif was present on the shapely and ambitious A2 chassis, with its bullet nose, introduced at the 1979 French Grand Prix. The team would go on to produce the highly competitive A3 chassis, the final car designed by Tony Southgate, introduced for the 1980 season. Despite their initial successes at Grand Prix level, Warsteiner were to withdraw their support for Arrows at the conclusion of 1980. In 1981, the team became officially known as Ragno Arrows Beta Racing Team, following a deal with Italian ceramics company Ragno and Italian tools manufacturer Beta Tools. The cars were initially dressed in an all-orange affair, before a white lower panel was introduced to the livery partway through the season. Beta was seen on the engine cover, whilst Ragno occupied the car's side pods and front wing. Additional sponsors, Penthouse Magazine, secured a position on the rear wing and engine cover. The updated A3 proved to be one of the leading cars of 1981, with Patrese clinching the team's one and only pole position at that year's Long Beach Grand Prix. Patrese also led for the majority of the race before retiring due to mechanical problems. This was also the season that Arrows switched to Michelin rubber, following Goodyear's hiatus from the sport. In 1982, the team switched again to Pirelli tyres, and from Valvoline lubricants to L, with the arrival of the A4. Clothing brand Nordica partnered the team during the season, taking up space on the monocoque, previously occupied by the outgoing Beta Tools. The team would also enter the A5 chassis late in the 1982 season, which proved to be the final Arrows car painted in Ragno Orange as the Italian ceramics company was set to make a permanent exit from the Formula 1 stage. Following the departure of Ragno, the team returned in 1983 with the A6 chassis, a revision of the previous year's car and a new sponsor-friendly white team livery. The team attracted a long line of smaller sponsors race by race throughout the course of a financially turbulent season. Names such as Mar Lemma, Cine Fiber, the McConnell Mason Gallery, Louis de Porter Carpets, and the Grand Prix International Magazine, as well as technical partners Valvoline and Goodyear, were all seen on the car throughout 1983. 
Most significantly, the team was sponsored by Barclay Cigarettes, which saw the cast for the first time adopt a principally cream-coloured livery, coupled with a burgundy strip which surrounded the monocoque, in deference to the American cigarette brand. The following season, Barclay developed into Arrows' official title sponsor, acquiring a contract to race BMW turbo engines. The Arrows team debuted the A7 chassis, the first Arrows BMW car, at the 1984 Belgian Grand Prix, held at Zolder. Nordica had returned to the team for another season, which saw the bottom half of the car painted blue. German construction equipment vendors Worth had also joined, acquiring space on the sides of the rear wing as well as the front wing. 1985 saw the team change to Castrol Fuels, as they continued to expand their sponsors portfolio, with Camozzi, DeLonghi, USF&G and Budget all welcomed aboard. These new acquisitions came together on the A8 chassis to create a very busy yet colourful livery. Terry Bootson scored the team its best finish in years when he crossed the line in second at the San Marino Grand Prix, despite having to self-propel his car across the line after having run out of fuel. The A8 was retained heading into the following season, as USF and G now appeared permanently on the car's side pods and rear wing. The team also briefly entered the largely uncompetitive A9 chassis, the final car designed by founding member Dave Voss, which saw action at only three events in the 1986 season. Following their successful involvement with Arrows, Barkley was set to leave the team at the end of 1986, an event which coincided with BMW's withdrawal from the sport, signalling the conclusion of the Barkley Arrows Association and the beginning of a restructuring process for the team. Beginning in 1987, USF&G stepped in to become the team's new title sponsor as the team adopted the maroon, blue and white of the American insurance company. The vastly competitive Arrows A10, the first Grand Prix car designed exclusively by Ross Braun, was outfitted with refurbished 1985 BMW engines, tuned and serviced in-house by the Arrows team and renamed after one of USF&G's subsidiary companies, Megatron. Along with the car's new USF&G motif, Camozzi were retained on the side of the rear wing, whilst Bosch, 3M, Trossardi and Wintershaw all took on a minor role. In 1988, the upgraded A10B, driven by Derek Warwick and Eddie Cheever, earned the team fourth position in the Constructors' Championship. This achievement would prove to be the highest position attained by the Aries team throughout their Formula 1 tenure, and included a podium for Cheever and Monza. In 1989, the team changed to mobile fuels and Ford V8 engines, following the cessation of F1's turbo era. The 1989 livery was slightly altered, as the maroon and blue strips were swapped in position, with both colours now encompassing both the front wing and nose cone of the A11. USF and G and Arrows would eventually part ways following 1989, as the Milton Keynes operation were preparing to begin the next decade with significant investment from Japan. Footwork International, major Japanese logistics company, commenced their partnership with Arrows in 1990, first appearing in the A11 chassis for the season opener at Phoenix. The cars were now painted in white and featured thin red strips which wrapped around the car diagonally. With the introduction of the A11B chassis midway through the season, a festive bow was seen on the car, adding an artistic element to the team livery. Footwork logos were seen on the engine cover and rear wing, whilst USF and G returned for one final season, taking up their usual position on the car's side pods. 1990 also heralded the commencement of the team's relationship with Brian Hart and a change to Elf Fuels. The following season the team was officially renamed Footwork Arrows and returned to the grid with the A11C, which was fitted with Porsche engines and ran on shell fuels. However, the Porsche engine proved to be a rather bulky power unit, which in turn forced the team to delay the introduction of its new FA12 chassis. The team would persist with Porsche for only the first six races of the season, before returning to Hart-prepared Ford engines. Blaupunkt and Fare were also acquired as additional sponsors during 1991. In 1992, the team ran with Mew and Honda Power and also changed fuel suppliers for the fourth season in a row as they signed a new deal with BP. Along with the change in technical partners, Japanese electronics company Toshiba emerged on the rear wing of the all new FA13 chassis. The team raced with the FA13 B car into the first couple of races of 1993 before producing the FA14. At the end of 1993, Footwork would diminish their sponsorship of the team, propelling Arrows into uncertain financial terms for the next few seasons. However, the team continued to push the envelope, as the 1994 season brought forth a change in livery design for Footwork Arrows. The team once again kept their synonymous white livery, which was uniquely decorated with red, blue and even green geometric blocks, which appeared to be flying off of the car as it thundered along the track at great speeds. This unique piece of work was courtesy of Matrix Design. 
The team once again reverted to forward power and subsequently took on Elf Fuels for season 1994. Primary Investors Footwear chose to no longer display their own branding on the car. Instead, the team devoted the available space to a host of smaller sponsors, which included mineral water brand Olivetto and clothing company Lee Cooper. The FA16 chassis for the 1995 season was powered by hard V8 engines and ran with a slightly altered geometrical look. Fuel supplier Sassol were now seen on the engine case, along with machine makers Unimat on the car's side pods. Energy drink Hype signed with the team mid-season, prompting a further alteration to the team's kit, as Hype's bright pink was worked into the livery and the company's logos were positioned on the car's engine cover and rear wing. Prior to the commencement of the 1996 season, Footwork would withdraw their involvement with the team, prompting Jackie Oliver and Alan Rees to buy back their shares in the team from the Japanese logistics firm and once again have a controlling interest in the team, which once again identified solely as Arrows. During the season, TWR owner Tom Wilkinshaw acquired a majority share of the team by buying out founding members Rees and Oliver, and subsequently rechristened it TWR Arrows. Such boardroom wranglings were reflected upon the livery of the FA17, Arrows' 1996 entry, which took on numerous guises and sponsors throughout the year. Companies such as Lycra, Powerhorse, Philips, Castrol, Brother, Bell South and Parmalat all joined the new and revitalised TWR-backed Arrows team as it headed into a new chapter. The arrival of the 1997 season marked a new beginning for the team, as the new A18 chassis now ran with Yamaha engines, Bridgestone tyres and shell lubricants. The new car also ran with the number one on its nose for the only time in the team's history, thanks to the major signing of reigning world drivers champion Damon Hill. Alongside Hill for the 1997 season was Brazilian Pedro Diniz, the preferred driver of Italian consumables corporation Parmalat. Wilkinshaw had also garnered a new title sponsor for his team in copier suppliers Dunker, as well as smaller sponsors such as Zepta, Ixion and Powerhorse, which had re-signed with the team following the previous season. The first livery of the TWR era was a mainly white and royal blue affair, which also included small touches of red and silver. The A18 chassis proved to be a competitive yet unreliable package. Such unreliability was typified by Hill's second position at the Hungaro ring. After leading much of the race, Hill and the team had to remain content with second position in the rostrum thanks to mechanical difficulties, much like Patrese 16 years earlier. This would prove to be the final podium position scored by the team. 1998 saw the team metamorphosize once again, with the A19 taking on a lustrous black livery that featured all of the team's sponsors displayed in white lettering. 98 also saw the team producing their own engines and transmission systems completely in-house, as the team's owner Tom Wilkinshaw fostered a working relationship with Brian Hart's engine company to produce what was known as the Arrows V10 engine, which ran on ELF fuels. However, the team's title sponsor was set to change once again following the end of 1998. The team continued to work exclusively with Brian Hart into 1999. In the absence of Dunker, the team negotiated an agreement with Spanish oil and gas company Repsol, which saw the front half of the A20 painted in orange, white and red. The rear half of the car remained black, and carried different sponsors at different stages of the season. This was the season Nigerian Prince Malik Ibrahim brought into the team, which saw his obscure T- brand appearing on the car's side pods throughout the front half of the season. However, the association with Prince Ibrahim was put to an end mid-season, as software wholesalers Barn took over. Zepta and Ixion remained with the team, joined by PIAA, whilst the team's tyre supplier Bridgestone was seen on the rear wing. In spite of the car's slick appearance, 1999 proved to be another turbulent season for the team on and off the track. Thankfully, Arrows were set to partner up with a brand new major sponsor, previously unseen in Formula 1, heading into the next millennium. Beginning in the year 2000, Orange became the latest in a line of telecommunications providers to pledge their brand to Formula One. The team became known as Orange Arrows and took on a new engine partner in Supertech. The team's cars were now suited in a neat and tidy combination of orange and black, which instantly became a rather popular and memorable livery. Repsol remained with the team and appeared on the car's engine cover and monocoque, whilst Eurobet, Lost Boys and Cello also joined the team for the first time in season 2000. 
The A21 would prove to be a sound design that showed a promising amount of pace on track, however the car was susceptible to unreliability, and thus was unable to net the championship points the team crucially needed heading forward. In 2001 the team would outfit the A22 with reconfigured Peugeot engines, provided to the team free of charge by Japanese engineering company AsiaTech. The team switched back to Elf Fuels following Repsol's withdrawal from the team, but secured two new sponsors in Dell Computers and Energy Drink, Red Bull. By this time the team were now on fragile ground as their financial debts continued to mount, forcing the team to cut back on most of their research and development. In 2002 the team raced with a largely unchanged livery and the Cosworth powered A23 chassis. 2002 though would turn out to be Arras's final hurrah in Formula 1, as the team succumbed to their financial pressures before the conclusion of the season and TWR went into liquidation at the end of the year. And so came the end for one of Formula 1's long-standing dignitaries, a team that achieved a total of 5 second place finishes, yet were ultimately denied victory on more than one occasion thanks to cruel misfortune. Arrows will be remembered as one of Formula 1's true survivalist teams.